Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be working on this 2011 535i with a bad misfire. We're going to diagnose what's wrong with it. So this car has an N55 motor. It came from an auction with the following problem. Let me show you. As you can see, it's running really rough. So this car is unusually loud because it has straight pipes. That's not the main issue. So by default, I'll be grabbing my Ethernet cable and my laptop to figure this out with ISTA, but we're gonna do things a little bit differently today. So what will be different about today is we're gonna be trying to diagnose the car with an oscilloscope and also checking the live data on a scan tool versus jumping straight to what ISTA has to say to see if maybe you can lead us down the right path. And then if that doesn't check out, we will go to ISTA and see if we can get a better clue of what the issue is. But I wanted to try something a little bit different and have your one to come in and kind of give his uh, taste on how he likes to diagnose things. There's a channel called Diagnose Dan that I follow. He actually put me onto it and it's really interesting. Sometimes it can seem like he's doing extra steps or just wasting time because he's kind of going through things methodically to rule it out, but it's an interesting approach. My styles normally do the research, get the codes, get to the problem as soon as I start filming and tell you what I found and start the work. Today will be a little bit different, but I hope you guys enjoy. If you guys aren't up to speed, I just got this shop space here. This is an auction car, but I obviously bought it at a reduced price due to the problem. That little talking head segment isn't my norm but of course uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit more of that in my new shop space. So if I had to be honest it's been very tempting to just whip out the laptop and see what the codes are. I've had the car for uh, getting on a week now. I really wanted it to be organic when we figure out what it is. I didn't want to have any clue as to what it is but if I was going on a hunch I would say it's fueling related either the high pressure fuel pump, O2 sensor, injectors etc or some type of reading issue. I've already unplugged the map to force the car into an open loop situation and that didn't make a difference. These cars are known to have injector problems especially the early models so you know that's a very likely possibility at this point. So we have Joel here and we just did a relative compression test with a virtual oscilloscope on a laptop. As you can see, there is the wave. Hey everybody, Joel Raleigh, Raleigh Motorsports here. So yeah, so one of the things that we wanted to do because uh, Musa just bought this car is to quickly and effectively determine the overall health of the engine. And the easiest and quickest way to do that is to just kill the fuel supply to the car so the car won't start. In this case, we unplug the fuel injectors and then we hooked up an amp clamp to the starter cable, which is attached to an oscilloscope. And then we are plugged in to the ignition wire. And so you can see, and what that does is that basically synchronizes the relative compression test with the firing of the ignition. So we can see here, every six peaks, this red line fires, and that's the ignition signal to the coil. That's what you're seeing here represented in this red line. You can see the firing order for BMWs goes one, five, three, six, two, four. One, five, three, six, two, four, and it just keeps going on and on. If we had a problem with this engine, these things would not be even across like this, you would see significant deviations. This was right when we started the car. So how much signal, how much resistance is coming through for when it first starts. But this is what you're looking for here and that's when we shut it off. Yeah, so but, we can use this as a reference for timing as well as just overall compression between the cylinders to make sure there's no mechanical damage on the engine, which would be causing a misfire. So we can start going towards sensors and electrical issues. And that's exactly right, yeah. So this basically, and this is great, like if I do a pre-purchase inspection for someone, for a customer, I'm doing this because this tells me, okay, the overall health of the motor is good. Yeah. These may represent five to seven PSI difference, which is pretty normal for a 100,000 mile BMW. That's pretty good. Okay, so I have a quick update for you guys. We found the problem, I'll give you a hint, it was up in the front here, but we'll get to that. Besides that relative compression test, there wasn't a whole lot to show on the scope. We pretty much used ISTA and or the codes that pull up in the Autel scanner to diagnose it, but let me show you what pulled up. Not sure if you'll be able to make that out, but it basically says that under the Vanos, the inlet under cold start was not controllable. That was after clearing all the codes, getting rid of all the misfires and rich codes. So there's a whole bunch of side effects that could happen, but in this case, the inlet 
uh, wasn't con being controlled properly, therefore it wasn't taking in enough air at idle on cold start, therefore it was too rich and fouling everything out, causing a cascade effect and a misfire across all the cylinders because you're just fouling everything out. So that was ultimately what it was. We came to the front of the engine, pulled out the vanal solenoid and huge red flag. So you know, this is what an N55 vanal solenoid looks like. This one's a bit damaged. It came with the car, it was sitting in the trunk. But as you can see, there's an O-ring on there. This one's actually torn. There's two O-rings and there's screens covering everything. This is for an N55. What we pulled out was an Amazon special for an N52, N51, N54, N53, etc. One O-ring, different design. The screens are actually on a different part of the block on the N54. This would slide in the head, but it was absolutely doing nothing. There was one leftover good solenoid in the trunk that the previous owner or whoever's trying to fix this left in there. So I slid that in in place of the one that was in there and all of a sudden it changed the way the car ran. So once we put the proper vinyl solenoid in the engine, it started to run a little bit different. It was trying to adapt. And next thing you know, that inlet code shifted to the exhaust side because the exhaust side also has the wrong solenoid in there. So what that would imply is the oil pressure that is coming into the head would kind of flow from this side over to this side. Therefore, that code was not popping up because it wasn't able to control the intake side. Once you have those O-rings in there and oil pressure built and that's actually being actuated properly, that problem shifted over to the exhaust side because the exhaust side didn't have enough pressure now. So now it's time to see how that runs with those new solenoids in there. So there's a couple red flags right off the bat when I started to pull it out. The connector was barely on there, it would just almost fall off with the ones that were in there, those cheap ones. And also it slid right out with no resistance. And here's what just came out, first time pulling it out. It's for an N54 or an N52. Completely different design and doesn't seal properly. It fits funny enough, but it really is a completely different story. Charge a car overnight. We only are left with a couple codes on this car naturally, which is pretty good. We have a pad wear sensor in the rear, no big deal. And then we have something to do with the park brake actuator. So we'll check it out. Maybe they're just unplugged. So we're gonna go over to service functions, powertrain, engine, adjustment functions, reset adaptations for the DME, reset all adaptations except those for the increment wheel, continue. Switching off the main terminal. Continue. Adaptations are being reset right now. Fully reset, turn the key off. So I'll be catching back up with you guys once we're slotting in the new proper vein of solenoids. All right, we're gonna slot in the proper solenoids now. All right, we're about to give the car its first start with the new solenoids. <laughs> The engine sounds great now. Once we took it for a test drive after replacing the vanal solenoids, it runs smooth. So we'll go ahead and take the car for a test drive. Okay, back from the test drive and it's idling butter smooth. Sounds nice and quiet, even though this thing is missing its sound deadening on top of the engine and the engine cover, uh, it's still pretty quiet. And considering it's straight piped, it actually goes pretty quiet, all things considered when it's warmed up. So I'd say this is a bit of a win because this was an auction car and we got it back on the road for a few hundred bucks. Now we gotta tackle the cosmetics. Special thanks to Joel from Raleigh Motorsports for coming out and helping with the diagnosis and hanging out. I'm gonna cut over to him right now. He has something to say. Hey everyone, I just wanted to thank Musa for inviting me here to show you all the relative compression test that we did on the engine before we bought any parts and threw parts at it and i was talking to him off camera and saying you know the benefit of doing that relative compression test is before you start throwing parts at the car what if it had a dead cylinder you know so before you do anything it's inexpensive it's very quick and it gives you accurate results but the next step is going to be the detail and we're going to see what we can do with this paint to see if we can get it how what kind of grade the car is going to be when he goes to sell it so if you've stuck around here till this far thank you and on the next video we will do the detail where we really see what we can do with this paint because if you look at it right now well it really looks bad so it's it's it looks like someone went through a lot of car washes in this so we're going to see what we can do with this paint 
to see what we can, what this car is actually going to be worth. So hopefully you guys are excited to see a paint restoration video because this paint really needs it and it'll be something that's kind of out of my usual forte. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. If this is the first video you're catching on mine, please consider subscribing. I do upload regularly. Thanks for watching.